title of the presentation is Node Cloud. So uh, Node Cloud is a Node.js uh, package uh, for the Open Cloud. So uh, when we uh, progress through the uh, presentation, uh, we will see what is Open Cloud and why it matters uh, uh, that we uh, know about Open Cloud. And uh, yeah, so uh, um, who am I? Uh, we will start in the presentation. So I'm Rajika, and uh, I'm currently working as a software engineer at 99X Technology. So uh, 99X Technology is a company based in Sri Lanka. So I'm from also from Sri Lanka. And also I'm a co-contributor at Scholab. So we are also representing GSOC and uh, GCI. And uh, you can uh, find me on any platform using this handle, uh, Rajkima, uh, GitHub, Medium, or Twitter. All right. So um, before starting, uh, before diving into the all the uh, details of Node Cloud and uh, uh, how we manage the APIs, uh, I need to uh, go through uh, what Open Cloud is all about. So, um, so imagine uh, that we have a situation like this. So we have an application and uh, we need to use uh, uh, different services of uh, different clouds. So um, in this case, we have, we have uh, Cloud A and uh, Cloud B. So this particular application is trying to use uh, a particular set of uh, services from Cloud A and also a particular set of uh, uh, services from uh, Cloud B as well. So this application is interacting with uh, uh, different uh, clouds. So, uh, yep. Uh, so the open cloud, uh, the basic uh, definition would be consuming different services of different uh, cloud providers. So uh, why would we need open cloud? So one one such use case is, is to uh, make use of different strengths of uh, different services. So you might have seen that uh, different um, uh, cloud providers such as AWS, uh, GCP, they have different services and uh, they have a similar uh, set of uh, services. So we can uh, make use of the strengths of each of those services um, using this uh, open cloud uh, paradigm. And uh, another thing is uh, using the redund redundancy and um, a disaster recovery, so uh, we can make use of uh, the open cloud uh, paradigm to uh, uh, the get to get rid of uh, disasters and to avoid vendor locking. So, if you are an organization, so you might be uh, particularly interested to uh, avoid uh, vendor locking. So, you might not be uh, interested in getting into one particular uh, cloud provider. So, uh, you need to uh, be flexible to uh, shift from one provider to another. And another thing is compliance. So as an organization, you are very uh, interested and you are very concerned about compliance. So various services from different cloud uh, providers might not be compliant with your uh, organization standards. So that's a, a very important point. And uh, scalability. So different um, providers have uh, different levels of scalability with their different services. So we need to be uh, thorough about scalability as well when we are building enterprise applications. And uh, cost optimization, again, uh, this is a, a very big concern for uh, organizations. The cost is a, a very important uh, thing that we need to uh, think about. All right. So uh, solutions are leveraging open, so open uh, cloud. So there are different, uh, there should be different characteristics of um, services uh, which should have uh, using the open cloud paradigm. So one such thing is transparency. We need to, go, we need to have a good transparency when we uh, code for uh, open cloud paradigm. So we need to see what's actually happening uh, with the APIs that we are using. And the versatility. And uh, we, need to be, we need to be able to easily manage um, the, the applications which are running on different clouds. So uh, if they are using different providers and they are different services, they should be actually easily managed. So we need to be uh, thorough about how we uh, about the maintenance aspects as well. And uh, the configuration options, again, this is uh, one such uh, uh, important uh, point that we need to think about. So when we have different providers, we need to uh, think about how we, how we are actually going to uh, configure our uh, cloud-based applications. So when we are interacting with different APIs, we need to be thorough about how we are going to uh, configure our different services uh, using the APIs of different uh, cloud providers. All right, so um, 
let's move into a use case. So in this scenario, uh, I'm referring to uh, backing up of uh, AWS S3 bucket in a GCP storage. So these are similar services from different cloud providers, AWS and GCP. So uh, why would we need uh, something like this? So this is a sample uh, use case. So there might be account hacking and uh, against uh, data loss. So you might be concerned about your data. So there might be use cases like this from uh, backing up AWS S3 to your uh, GCP storage. So uh, this is a very, a very simplified architecture. So you have uh, AWS uh, Cloud Provider and uh, GCP. So what? So this is um, our application layer. Uh, what we are trying to do is uh, we have a cron, cron job in this uh, case, and uh, we are trying to back up this S3 data from our application to our GCP. So how we are going to do is uh, we here we have the uh, AWS SDK, and uh, here we have the GCP SDK. So we need to um, code this uh, application layer and we need to be thorough about the maintenance uh, and the design uh, aspects of this uh, particular layer. So this is um, how we can do uh, with uh, the uh, respective uh, SDKs. So what we see here is, the, is that uh, we have a disaggregation of APIs uh, because uh, different providers have their different uh, API implementations. So AWS might be following a different set of uh, specifications and they might um, expose different set of uh, interfaces for you. And uh, if you think about GCP, they will do their own um, specifications. And also, um, the constructs are different from each, each other. So as I mentioned, they have different uh, ways of exposing their interfaces from different services. So what are the disadvantages of uh, disaggregated APIs? So if you are a large organization and if you have, uh, organize, uh, or if you have um, applications uh, using open cloud paradigm, um, you need to uh, move faster if you are a large organization. Um, so it is very hard to uh, move faster if you have these uh, disaggregated APIs. And um, you will spend more time on integration rather than your business logic and uh, there's a really high learning curve when it comes to learning the different uh, interfaces of different um, SDKs from uh, different cloud providers. And uh, it's really hard to be, uh, focus on the business proce processes because uh, you, are, you might be uh, focusing about your integration uh, aspects rather than your uh, business processes so, so, that's, so that your ROI, ROI will be uh, much lower. So with that, so we see that uh, the clear constructs are, are a necessity. And uh, we came up with a solution called NodeCloud. So this is for uh, Node.js only. Uh, this is a Node.js package. And uh, it's a unified API layer in Node.js. So you will be uh, using only NodeCloud Node if you are going to interact with different cloud providers and if you are using the open cloud paradigm. So currently uh, we support uh, three providers, Amazon, uh, Web Services, Google Cloud, and uh, Microsoft Azure. So the design uh, philosophy. So we have uh, chose to uh, we have chosen a, a plugin architecture for this because uh, we need we need to build a community around this uh, project so that the community also can contribute to our uh, Node Cloud uh, project and uh, yeah. So this is uh, pre the previous the same architecture uh, diagram that we saw. We have the um, different cloud providers and we have our application layer. So with Node Cloud, we can replace those uh, two SDKs and we will be using only Node, Node Cloud so that uh, it will be more easier and you will be all, always interacting with Node Cloud APIs. So you, need to, so you don't need to um, learn any more extra APIs from different uh, cloud providers. So how do you get started? Uh, so we have uh, different plugins. So uh, there's a configuration file called nc.config.js, and what we need to do is um, there's uh, so in this uh, nc.config.js we need to import our plugins. So one such plugin is a uh, Node Cloud AWS plugin, and the other one is a Node Cloud GCP plugin. 
So how we uh, give the providers are like this. Uh, we specify our providers, and um, yeah. So we ha here we have uh, AWS and uh, Google providers. So yeah. So I will uh, show you a, a quick demonstration of um, not cloud and uh, how we can uh, interact with uh, different uh, APIs. So uh, this uh, simulates the same use case that, that I mentioned in the uh, presentation. So we are going to um, um, upload uh, to S3 bucket and also uh, with the same API, we can uh, do that to uh, GCP as well. So here I'm trying to um, create, here I'm trying to create a S3 bucket So you can see that uh, the parameters, these parameters might uh, be different for different um, uh, cloud providers and their respective services, and uh, that's something that we can't actually, uh, that we don't actually have control on. So uh, these parameters should be uh, based on their um, SDKs. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, create a S3 bucket. So, so you can see that um, this S3 bucket was created from the uh, create API from the uh, Node Cloud uh, SDK. And again, I'm uh, trying to upload from uh, Node Cloud. So I'm uh, giving a key value pair. you can see that it was uh, uploaded from the uh, SDK, not Cloud S SDK itself. And uh, we will see again how we can use the same um, API, API interface uh, to uh, create a, a GCP storage and also how to upload it uh, using the same API. So here I am uh, using the um, Google provider from uh, not Cloud, and uh, I'm trying to create a bucket. So you can see that the, this is the same API. So earlier you had also a bucket. But if you uh, use uh, different SDKs, you will see that uh, AWS SDK has a uh, different terminology, and uh, if you use uh, Google GCP SDK, they have a different terminology. So uh, with Node Cloud, you need to only um, learn one API, and with that, on with that API only, you can uh, uh, make use of the different services. So here I'm uh, creating. So this is the uh, the create uh, API, the same API that I, that I use uh, for a. AWS S3. So we will uh, go to our GCP uh, platform, and we can see that the uh, the bucket was created in uh, GCP. And again, uh, I'm trying to upload using the same API that I used uh, earlier to upload to AWS bucket. Again, I'm, uh, we have different parameters, so this is not our, under our control, as I mentioned earlier. So I'm uploading a key value pair. Yep, um, so I have uploaded a JSON, apparently. And uh, it was uh, there with the uh, same API that I used uh, to upload to uh, S3. Uh, AWS S3. So that was a quick um, demonstration of uh, how we can use um, Node Cloud APIs to interact with uh, different providers with the same API. So you don't need to uh, learn a, learn about different APIs when you are building enterprise applications. All right. So uh, we have an organization called uh, Cloud Lips. So uh, Node Cloud uh, is under Cloud Lips organization. So if you go to uh, GitHub slash, slash uh, Cloud Lips uh, slash Node Cloud, you will see the uh, core repository. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a plugin architecture. So this is the uh, uh, core repository that we have. And uh, this uh, repository has the ability to uh, 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 inject different plugins. So as I uh, showed earlier, we, have, we had the uh, AWS uh, plugin and also a GCP plugin. 
So this is the core repository. And uh, these are the plugins uh, that we have. Uh, this is one of the earliest plugins that we have created, NordCloud uh, AWS Dash plugin. So uh, when we were developing this uh, NordCloud project, uh, we thought of how we can um, provide the configuration. So uh, we, we, we so in uh, software we have uh, different ways of uh, configuring. So we thought of uh, going ahead with configuration with code. So as I mentioned, we have a file called um, nz.config.js. So with that file, we can actually um, configure configure our uh, NordCloud providers, and uh, so we prefer configuration with code. Yeah, so this is the same file that I mentioned earlier. So we have our configuration in our JS file. So let's say uh, there's a new provider, um, upcoming provider, and uh, it's a really good provider, and uh, they have uh, similar services uh, that we uh, have in our different providers that, we, that are in the market currently. So uh, let's say this is a provider called X. So we need to create a plugin. So as a community member, you see that uh, you need to you need you need the uh, you need a plugin to interact with uh, Node Cloud. So how we can, so how we can do it is um, just um, add the plugin name to the list of uh, providers. So just create a pull request, and we have a file called providers.js. So it's uh, really uh, easy to find that in the Node Cloud, Node Cloud uh, core repository. And uh, then what you need to do is uh, create a repository using the following naming convention. So you might have seen the Webpack uh, naming convention for plugins and loaders. So this is more like the same uh, convention that we are following here. Um, we have Node Cloud, the provider name. So our provider is X, Node Cloud dash X dash plugin. And uh, you have to uh, call your APIs um, in the repository itself. And next, uh, what you need to do is uh, communicate with the core team. So you can see uh, the core team if you go to our Node Cloud uh, core repository and uh, just communicate with us. Uh, tell us what you're going to do and uh, we will uh, uh, communicate with you uh, uh, and we will see what, what we can do with the plugin. And as the last step, uh, just uh, publish it to NPM, share it with everyone. Uh, yeah. So uh, the aspects of uh, Node Cloud, uh, where can we use this? Uh, there are three different aspects. Uh, the first one is application layer. So this is uh, something that I uh, demonstrated in the presentation. Uh, and uh, provisioning infrastructure. So let's say if, you're going, if you need to spin up a VM uh, from uh, AWS or GCP, you can use the same APIs to provision your uh, infrastructure using the uh, API layer itself. And uh, the consuming infrastructure, when you are uh, consuming different uh, infrastructure levels, uh, you can uh, interact with the uh, Node.js SDK and uh, uh, get familiar with the uh, APIs uh, itself. Yep, so uh, that's uh, all I have for uh, from me. Um, if you want to contact me, uh, use this handle. Uh, I'm on GitHub, uh, Twitter, and Medium. Uh, yeah, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, Yep, should be. So, uh, questions? No, no, take us some questions. Come on. <laughs> Complete silence. I do feel indeed to find out what you guys are interested in. <laughs> All right, definitely no questions. Last call. All right, thank you. In that case, round of applause. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And uh, one note uh, before finishing up, uh, we also. Uh, uh, having this project, uh, if you're a student, uh, we are also having this project in uh, uh, GSOC and GCI. So if you're interested, just uh, check this out. Thank you very much. Uh, you are just asking generally about Scholab, right? OK, uh, so uh, to get started with Scholab, uh, you can go to our GitHub channel. And uh, if you're interested in a particular project, you can go to that particular project's uh, GitHub channel and uh, just say hi. 
and uh, mentors will be there and they will respond within a day maybe a day or two and uh, we will see uh, what you can do if you are a beginner or if you are intermediate level so we will see what is your level and uh, we will uh, inspect that and uh, we, we can, you can just get started with issues so we in our repositories we mostly we have uh, labels in the issues so you can uh, uh, inspect that and uh, just get started for GSOC or GCI.